Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your uh, co-hosts, uh, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today is Randy Aylesworth, who is the Assistant Director at the Callahan Center. Please stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. Uh, and I'm Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, which is a large firm. There are 70 of us. We're the largest firm outside of Boston. So everybody gets to do what they like. And I like doing elder law. But this is not about elder law. It's about Frank and Mary. Uh, they're the couple I always talk about. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. If you identify with that, if you want to stay right here in Framingham, then this show is about who the people are that you need to know and what the programs are that you need to know about in order to stay right here in Framingham. Uh, my get, my co-host, uh, Grace O'Donnell, always finds these terrific guests. She's got a great one here today. Grace, whom do we have? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Randy Aylesworth, the Assistant Director at the Callahan Center. He's going to talk to us today about Framingham Senior Property Tax Workoff Program. This is a way that seniors can volunteer their time to help city departments and earn up to $1,000 off their property tax bills. So, Randy, do you want to tell us a bit more about the property tax program? Are there certain criteria for people to apply for that? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Grace and for Arthur for having me on today. This is uh, an honor to be on the show again. Uh, this show is a great resource in the Framingham community for all older adults. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And we want you to know, Randy, we're only having you back on because our ratings were so high the, the show that you did. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate that. And uh, it's great to be back again. I had a great time before and I've been on a couple times in the past. So this is uh, this is wonderful. And it's always great to be back to talk about the Senior Property Tax Workoff Program. Uh, that is a program in Framingham for all older adults at least age 62, so they can work in a city department. And they can earn, by working up to a maximum of 70 hours, they can earn a $1,000 tax credit. Now that tax credit can be applied to a future property tax bill in the future. And the great part with the program is that it really is a solution for many older adults to remain in their community. And there are probably two things we hear very often from older adults. How can I remain in my home here in Framingham? And then second, how can I remain in the community? So there are two concerns for them. This one allows them, gives them a financial solution an answer to remain in their home, which is where they really want to be. A lot of the surveys come back stating only nine, probably almost 90% of the older adults want to stay at home for as long as they can. And then also from a bigger perspective, how can they stay in their community so they can be close to family, friends, their doctors, all of their loved ones, social connections, even their senior center. So how can they stay close by? And this is one of the solutions for it. And it's a wonderful program that um, gives people that chance to do that and stay right in Framingham. So Randy, so, can you tell me a bit about some of the opportunities that people have as far as how they can help the city? Absolutely. Uh, there are, uh, I could probably start off by explaining uh, the application process and how people would actually um, start to come on to the light, um, to the program. Uh, first of all, the application process is that they would call the Callahan Center. They can call us at area code 508-532-5980. 
or they can stop by the Callahan Center at their convenience. And if they call, they'll speak to one of our receptionists who will in turn provide them with a uh, application for the program. They will ask for their name, address, and phone number. They will then mail the older adult the application. And it's a very brief application, so it's very simple to fill out. When they complete the application, they have to include some documents that go with it. And the documents that they would need to include would be a copy of their last property tax bill. They would also have to include a copy of their 2021 federal tax return. And they also would have to include a copy of their driver's license or a photo ID would work as well. Once they have all those documents together, they send them back to the Callahan Center and specifically they would come back to me and I would sit down and I would review the document and I would always respond to all the applicants um, and letting them know that I've received the application and how whether they can move forward in the process. Now, part of that application process will lead to the eligibility requirements. And with this particular program, there are two sets of eligibility requirements. Uh, the first set concerns what we like to call the basic eligibility requirements. And they would concern, uh, number one, they would uh, concern someone being at least 62 years of age to be in the program. Also, and they can also be disabled. And that's also an important point to mention with this program. Also, they would need to be a Framingham resident. As well, they would need to be a homeowner. And the person could be a spouse of a homeowner as well and be eligible for this program. Another requirement would be that they would have to reside in the home that they're paying taxes on. And they will have to have resided in this home for at least the past five years. So that's the first set. If they are eligible at that point, then I would look at the second set of requirements. And those requirements are called the income requirements. And if a person is single, their gross annual income cannot exceed $50,000 a year. If they're married, their gross annual income coming into that household in total cannot exceed $60,000 a year. So once I look at the basic requirements, the income requirements, and then of course the last piece is really, would the person be a good fit for any of the job openings that we currently have working in the city departments. And I always make that phone call to people or I may meet with them in person if they're brand new to the program. And we sit down, we have a talk and we want them to know that if they're eligible for this program, that's wonderful. If not, then I'll try to pursue other options within Framium to help them out. But with this particular program, if they meet all those uh, eligibility requirements, then I can start looking at the various jobs that we have. And Grace, you had mentioned what are the opportunities in Framingham for them. This year, for this year's program, we have 18 different job opportunities. And they range from working in a city department, such as human resources, where someone could be a file clerk for them. They could work in the office for Department of Public Works and they could be on the computer doing work. They could also work in the office for the treasurer's office, which is extremely busy. And they always take multiple older adult workers uh, in this particular program. And people would need some basic computer skills as well uh, to work in that office. But if they don't have those skills, then we can find a job for them that does not require them. For example, being a greeter at the Callahan Center or they can be in a role of checking in people attending exercise classes at the Callahan Center. We also have a role where they can work in a police substation for the Framingham Police and be there and sort of sit on duty in case anyone comes into that substation. 
We have jobs, for example, working at the library, where we've had people deliver uh, books as well as newsletters uh, to people who are more homebound. So we have a variety of positions. Uh, we even have one last year that came in at working for the conservation department. Uh, at this moment, I've already reached out to many departments so they can let me know what their workload is and what job openings that they would have. But I'm also continuing to explore other departments to find other exciting jobs for people. And the great part is in this program, the older adults love their departments that they work in, and those departments love them. Very often, they're the departments are always asking for that person to come back again. Please, can we have Frank come back? Can we please have Mary come back into the uh, department? We like them so much. It was such a great fit. And so this program is loved by the older adults that actually apply for it. So I urge everyone when they watch this show today, if they could apply for this, and it may be a good fit for them, uh, because I think they'll really enjoy it. Um, many of our older adults have been in the program, have loved it for years. Yeah, we, we've we been very fortunate, Randy, at the Callahan to have a number of people who contribute to our operation by working in the property tax program. You mentioned about the people checking in for the exercise classes and greeting uh helping people become more acquainted with the center. So yeah, we've, we've been very fortunate on that end uh, to have seniors coming through that program. We have the property tax program has actually had many um, of the uh, jobs actually in the Callahan Center. So for example, the greeter position that you had just mentioned, Grace, uh, checking in the exercise classes. We've had a person working in our fitness center that can show older adults how to use the exercise equipment that's here that's becoming very popular now uh, we also have had people work in the travel department when they had it previously um, to interact with people we've had people work at our front desk um, to work as a receptionist so we've had a number of positions down here at the callahan center and once again if you have those computer skills great but if you don't that's okay as well I'll try to uh, find a position for you. It's always worth making that phone call and talking to us and really to explore this program and in a bigger way to really explore their options in the city of Framingham. Yeah. I can imagine one question some people might have is whether there are any COVID protocols. And I know at least at the Callahan Center right now, we do not have any mask requirement. We do encourage people if they would like to wear a mask, they are welcome to do that. And I know at, at City Hall, they have a similar, there are signs right on the doors that say masks are not required, but they are encouraged. So for people who are not comfortable with having a mask, that's okay, at least for now, uh, with the, the state of how COVID is at this moment in time. Yes, we're finding now in the Callahan Center, more and more older adults are coming back into the center. And I think we're at a point compared to the past two years where we've reached a new stage, I think, right now, where people are very comfortable coming back. And it's important to realize that Framingham is mask friendly. So if you prefer to wear a mask, that's absolutely fine. If you don't want to, that's that's fine as well. That's your option. And down here, all the protocols, I work closely with our facilities management department, and we have all the masks, gloves, hand sanitizer. We have the protective glass that are in other city departments as well. So if you go through City Hall, you're seeing protective glass that's still up in many of the offices as well. So we're still socially distanced. We are aware of that and paying attention to that and doing everything very safely in our office and we have for a while but the city of framium is very conscious of that and we have as well down the callahan center but i know all these city departments i visited them recently and they are doing things in a very safe manner mm -hmm. i think that's encouraging for people to hear uh because COVID is still out there uh 
people are still coming down with it. Even those who are fully vaccinated and have been up to date on their boosters, we're encouraging people when the new boosters come out, uh, avail yourself of them to keep yourself that much safer with the variants that have come about. Now, I, I, can I ask a couple of questions? Randy, uh, it, it sounds like it's such a great program. Are there a lot of, are there really slots available? This sounds like one of those programs where there'd be a waiting list, especially if you've got those Franks and Marys who have already been adopted by some of these departments because they love them, right? And I, and that would make sense that you'd, you know, if you're a department person, obviously you really want to ideally have somebody that you know who's coming in. So are, are there are there slots? There are. This year we have 18 slots already. Um, just in the past week, I've had six people that appear to be really excellent fits for six of those slots. So we have 12 remaining. But uh, we could get, um, you know, some new opportunities during the year, possibly. Oh. Sometimes someone may go through the program and due to some circumstance, they need to leave the program a little early. That might create a new um, opportunity for someone. I always urge people to send me your application throughout the year. Typically, we get the application starting on July 1st, and we get the applications in July and August. And then sometime in September, we start the Senior Property Tax Workoff Program, and it continues for the next nine months, all the way to the end of May. But you're right, Arthur, it's a great program. And it's a very large tax credit. It's a program that people really enjoy working in. So let me give you an example. Uh, many of our folks work about three hours a week in their city departments. Yeah. And they'll keep working the three hours a week until they reach that 70 hour mark. Now in some departments, depending upon their workload, maybe they'll need Frank or Mary to work maybe more than three hours in a day. And if that's okay with the older adult, they'll just simply work more hours and complete the program even faster than the nine month period. We have some people finish it all within a few months. So it's a very, very popular program. Right now we're starting to see more applicants than we have over the past couple years. And that's a great sign. So just in the past week, I've already had about uh, 18 applicants already come in and six of them appear to be good fits for their jobs. But it's a wonderful opportunity and it's one that the people who have done it before want to get back in the program. But we always are looking and showing priority for the new people because we okay. want more people in Framingham to know about this program and to be a part of it. So, so Rene, I had a couple of Related to that, I had a couple of financial type questions. So you said that that, that the the program basically will allow a reduction of your of your tax bill of up to a thousand dollars. If you end up for whatever through whatever circumstance participating in the program but not being able to get to the seventy hour, do you get some kind of an allocated like a pro rata share of the hours based on the number of hours that you worked, or is it kind of like all or nothing? It's a, it can be done on a prorated basis. Can so be. while yeah. we would love to see someone work up to 70 hours, but let's say they only are able to work 35. Right. And at that point, they get a $500 tax credit. So we would prorate it for them. And you never know. Sometimes circumstances come up for people where they're not able to continue, but yeah. that's okay. We'll continue to work with them and they will get that prorated amount. Yeah. Uh, so that's always a, a good part of this program as well. And, and this kind of relates to a couple of follow-ons. So I think you had mentioned, so if you're doing the work, that 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 amount gets, gets get, does that get credited to, to this year's, this fiscal year's um, um, uh, taxes or to next year's fiscal year, next fiscal year's? Because I know that it runs like June, you know, July 1 to June 30th. Yeah, that's a great question, Arthur. It does concern this current fiscal year. So that's why we run the program where it starts in September and ends at the end of May of next year. I the, see. For the city of Framingham, its fiscal year ends at the end of June of next year. So this program fits nicely within the fiscal year. So you can do the calculation. And, and have you found over time, I assume, I'm assuming, 
that this is at, that this ends up being a budget item at town at uh, at uh, when, when now when the budget gets I was going to say when the when the warrant gets acted on, but those were the old days, right? So when the budget gets passed, so so have you found um, that over time that that number has of eighteen has remained relatively constant, or has it gone up or down? But it just, I'm just curious because it would, it, as you say, it just strikes me that it would be a very attractive program to a lot of seniors and therefore one that, you know, once the word had got around more and more, you know, if the city, you know, city officials would be saying, well, gee, you know, we, we should need, we need more slots here. I'm just curious. Yeah the, yeah. the city of Framingham actually has been very supportive with this program right now. There, there is, there are 18 positions. So that would translate into $18,000 that have been appropriated for this particular program. Now that has reduced slightly in the past couple years, but that's only due to COVID. Uh, I expect as the popularity of the program returns, people are coming out of their homes, working yep. back in these jobs again, that we'll see that appropriation increase. And for years, it always had been at a very similar consistent level. It was only COVID that slightly reduced it. Right. And so I think we're going to see it reduce in the future because the city clearly understands and Grace and I have met with a, a former uh, chief financial officer in the past asking, could we change the requirements, the needs for older adults? And there was no hesitation made by the city of Framingham to want to accommodate for our request. In fact, it was one of the easiest meetings I ever had been in when they said, yes, Randy, we're gonna give you and Grace what you want for this program. So they're definitely on board. Uh, so right now we have $18,000 appropriated for this fiscal year. If it is popular and we're able to fill all the positions this year, I expect uh, hopefully that that will increase in the near future. Yeah, to answer, uh, your question, Arthur, in the past, we had as many as 39 positions available. I so, see. Yeah. Um, but it's always, you know, a, a question of what are the needs of the different city departments? What are the skill levels of the people applying? And um, especially right now, are people comfortable being in public? Um, and, you know, people in this uh, age group have some health concerns, so, you know, we are trying to make people as aware of it as we can so that as many people who are eligible can make use of it. Uh, $1,000 off a property bill is, uh, I think, pretty substantial. That's a significant amount. You know, when yeah. you think about for the, you know, for the, let's say for the average taxpayer, that may be, you know, 15, 20% of the whole bill. That's like a, that's a big deal. But I, I think your point is well taken that for many of the positions you describe really have a, I want to say an outreach component, but an interaction with the public component, so that if you really have health-related concerns, you may want to be, you may want to kind of step back from that. Yeah, yep. but but that's something that the older generation, in general, by now they have learned how to interact well with the public. They tend to have, you know, excellent customer service skills, right. and they're usually very comfortable with engaging the public. And some of the people that uh, have been hired through this program, as Randy has mentioned, have just absolutely loved it and felt that they were giving something back to their community at the same time as helping themselves. And, you know, it's it's a great way for the public to see no matter what your age, there is something you have to contribute to your community. I think it's a, a very good way of sort of um, promoting that. Right, right. And and Grace, as the as the executive director, given you know, if you if you if if you had the extra resources available, do you think there would be actually more positions at the Callahan Center that would that you could end up that would be of value to you if the budget allowed? Well, it all depends on what people's skill level is and what the level of activity at the center is. You know, there's it's a whole mixture that goes on. Right. You know, in terms of where are the needs. Where are the uh, the gaps in uh, assistance, and where are the skills uh, that need to be applied to those positions? And I suppose both of you are now experiencing that growth that you've been talking about, right? So that that must be a kind of a wonderful feeling for you, 
right? It's Actually, been terrific. To see people again, right? It's been great to see the smiling faces back in in the center and uh, having more attendance increasing for each of the programs. It's been very rewarding to see people again enjoying themselves and taking part in all that we have to offer. Right. To, not only to see the faces, but to see them smiling as opposed to that kind of hesitance, right? For right. like two years that people would kind of walk in like, yeah. uh, you know, is this really, is this really safe? Right. Mm-hmm. And suddenly that you can feel a kind of a collective sigh, you know, that, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, so I just want to mention also uh, to everyone, usually I meet all the candidates, all the applicants for this particular program. So at one point, I'm going to have a sit down meeting with everyone in my office where we can discuss their skill set and also talk about the opportunities in this program. But when I have that meeting, it's more than just this program. It's a matter of this program first and foremost, but we also listen to what the needs are of our older adults. And if they don't match with this program, I let them know of other opportunities within the city of Framingham. So it could be through the assessor's office. There are seven different, what they call exemptions that someone may qualify for. They may qualify for the senior circuit breaker, which is offered through the state of Massachusetts. So when people come here at the Callahan Center, we're trying to find solutions for them um, so that they're not turned away because they weren't, they didn't qualify for a certain program. We're trying to find an answer for them and to get to yes, as opposed to hearing a no. And very often we'll find people that usually they qualify for this program, but if they don't, then I may be able to find another program for them. And sometimes people qualify for multiple programs here in Framingham, but it's a very consistent theme where people will say, I never thought about doing it. I never heard of about, I never heard about the program. So I didn't know that I could apply for it. And they mentioned that for multiple programs. So having that sit down meeting, we can close the door, we can talk about what their needs are, and then I can try to find some answers for them. Uh, there are some people who qualify for multiple programs and they can benefit financially because of that. Right, because Frank and Mary really want to stay in Framingham, but Framingham, the Framingham of today is not the same price as the Framingham those people grew up in, right? right? It's like a pricey world and they're trying to, you know, <clears throat> and it's all well and good to say, oh my God, my house is worth $800,000, how wonderful, until the tax bill arrives, you know, and then you're like, well, this isn't so good, right? Yeah, so that, and- so I, and I think that's... That, Grace, you know, that's really the kind of the theme that we've always tried to speak to doing these shows, right? Is that go to the, you know, the the, uh, the subtext is always the same. Go to the Callahan's. Just go. Just <laughs> go. Meet these people. They're very nice. So one of the reasons for the show is so people get to see how pleasant people are, right? Yep. And, and, and talk about them and talk about, you know, what you, you know, you really want to stay here. And, and so what, you know, what can we're all in this together. I guess it was just, that's kind of the theme. We're all in this together. So my, my one of my jobs here, Randy, is to be timekeeper. And I'm looking at time saying, oh, this is getting a little close. Um, but I really, really want to thank you for coming on. I'm sure that our ratings will once again go up as a result of your of your presence, right? And Grace, thanks, for, thanks once again for always being able to keep finding like month after month. You know, I just kind of show up as the comic relief, but being able to find people that I think Frank and Mary really want to know mm-hmm. people that Frank, you know, and programs that Frank and Mary really want to know about. So Randy, thank you so much. Grace, thank you so much, folks. Just go see them. They're very nice. Uh, and we'll look forward to see you, seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much.